I am the seed that grows, that grows and, and, advances and advances the kingdom, the kingdom for, soul for soul winning. This word, this word bread, of life, bread of life that I received today, I received today. It's, not it's not only for me, but to be shared, to be shared with, others with others that they, that they may, grow may grow in Christ, in Christ as, well as, as well as myself for the purpose, for the purpose of, of successful living. Thank you. Want to welcome you in. Good morning to everyone. This is the early bird service. Want to welcome in the Mother Church in Greenwood, the Mother Campus. Uh, we'll be at 210 Pansy Row, Hodges, South Carolina, around 10 a.m. this morning. And of course, to the in person in Greenville and to those that are part of the virtual and to all of our global connections. We're not going to waste any time this morning. <clears throat> We're going back to Galatians 5 and 1. We're going to begin with section C and D. And it says, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Here is the topic, here's the subject, is make a choice. He says in the latter clause of C and D, be not entangled again. We do have a choice and many people don't think that they have a choice because of present situation. So when it says make a choice, I wanna give you something, those for the writers. The goal of the adversary, you have to realize there are evil forces and evil people that allow evil forces to use them in life. And it normally starts with how they speak and how they talk and how they um, come at you. And it says the goal of the adversary is to take away. Most people are not adding to you. They are trying to take away. It is a solid competitive fight to the top. You're trying to play fair and they plan to play dirty. They come in, you think you can trust them and they're trying to sabotage you. I'm going to give you something. Make people earn your trust. So if you're a writer, make people earn your trust. Everybody in your space is not trustworthy. And sometimes you allow things that you think are your vulnerabilities to be exposed to people and they wind up taking these things and using them against you. You can't have, yes ma'am. And then when they hurt you, you're still vulnerable to them to take over. Right, and then guess what? They kick dirt on you. <clears throat> they hurt you and, and that's the whole point is to stall you. And once you are stalled, they throw dirt all over you. And now you've got to, first of all, come to yourself, figure out where you are, examine how you got there. And by the time you dig up and get up, the train is gone. So a uh, one way to say it is that they intentionally try to play mind games with you. And it all starts with the ears. So we say the goal of the adversary is to take away the potential of any type of hope. You just got elevated. You just went to another department. There are people that are looking behind and there are people that are in that department that want to sabotage you because they want that for their friend, for their partners. They don't want you there. You somewhere praising God. Oh, hallelujah, the Lord good. Da, da, da. Yeah, the chicken and chicken and chicken. And they sitting there just waiting and setting traps for you. So again, the goal of the adversary is to take away, not add to. And that's something when I say make a choice, you have to examine everything and everybody in your life. Are they an addition, an asset, or are they here to bleed and to take away? You spend, people spend too much time worried about their friend's problems and, and how she going to make it and she, did she got to get her bill paid. She made it. He made it. They do things with no regard, and then they use your mind to solve a situation, and they never plan to use the things you tell them. So you've just wasted and burnt energy that you needed for yourself. So here's what, here's any type of potential of hope. Let me give you the basis of hope. Hope is the beginning of the building blocks of your faith, belief, trust, and action. I'll say it again. And so this is why 
because they, they don't want you to have anything outside of their control. They don't want you to use your mind. Now, the, here's the bigger thing. They don't want you to tap into your God. Because truthfully, they want to be your idol God. It's just like this morning. I was so, you know, it thrills my, my heart when I see young people opening, getting their uh, Bible app or getting the Bible. You don't know how God will bless you because you take the time to get in this word. Not just what they say it, but you take the time to look at the ingredients. So here's the thing. If you're thinking about them, then you're not getting directed by God. Because it goes against your spirit. That's why you keep bringing it up. So you have to make a choice. Be not entangled Maya Angelo said, when people show you who they are and you are the CEO of your life and your future, hire and fire accordingly and promote when it's deemed necessary that an individual has earned and, and, and you can reward them with your trust. If not, they just, they just an unexposed booby trap. Hope starts with the building blocks of faith Belief, trust, and action. The, someone would say, well, what's the whole purpose of an adversary? It's to carry out their best interest, not yours. See, when God created you, he put a best interest in you. Well, see, here's, we're kind of immune to distraction because, see, Technically, scientifically says we were not designed to multitask. And I know that rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Because when you have more than two or three things to do, you probably only complete 5% of what you said you were going to do. Multitasking isn't for the, it says the brain. Now, don't look at me. This is, this is science. This isn't me. Science says that we were not designed to multitask. Multitask becomes a, a bigger distraction. Because the more you do, the more you think you can do. So now you got 50 windows open and you haven't completed two. So what's the percentage of winning? Does this make sense? So, see, what forces want to do, and this is going to sound crazy, and this is a part of scientific science, is they want to use your energy to carry out their thing. And how they do it is they deceive you and then gaslight you. You ever wonder where it's coming from? Most of the time, someone that we've talked to. And so then now the adversary sends someone to gaslight you. You ever walked in the store and you knew what you were supposed to pick up, but when you get in the store, you can't remember why, and sometimes you don't know what store you're in? Do I know? What's that? He's gone? <laughs> That's what people will do to you. That's what people will do to you. This is why we began talking about they hurt you. That was a topic. Free your mind. And how to heal. Today is make a choice. And this is what I got out of our conversation offline. Be ready for ready. Be ready for ready. Be ready for ready. If you're not ready, you can't get ready and you're supposed to be ready. Your future is awaiting. Your dreams are awaiting. What's wrong? Stay ready, say you don't have to get ready. Okay. Okay, that's okay. That's cool. It says stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Yes. Yeah, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That is a good one. That is a good hashtag. Here's the thing. Why is it critical? Why is it critical? Because you have to just take a, a good seven seconds and think, 
How much have you cheated yourself this year? Financially? Educationally? Completed tasks? Lawn care? Painting of the house? Pressure washing of the house? Getting your car win winterized before winter comes? Checking your tires? Or are you about to cheat yourself again? We have to look at closing 2024 correctly. So our mindset, as you say, what does the street say? Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. 2025, you should have at least 85% of the first quarter of 2025 laid out. You should be ready. You should have a plan. <laughs> Some people do it. You should have a plan all the way up to Easter. <laughs> there you go. I like that. You need a be. This is why we do the early bird, so we can drop some things, so you can go get your brunch, take a nap, wake up. I think one of the most critical things that will, will make your life different and better is reviewing your notes. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> yes. Yes. You should already have an agenda for first quarter. You should already have a Christmas budget. You should. See, this is this is like looking. This is reexamining and getting the clutter out. out. You, this is you, you. It's like it's like a virus. I, I was sharing. I don't know if I was talking to you. I was sharing. With the little kid told his mama he had a number three. And he, he had to do a number three. And she was like on the phone with her friend. Ah, oh, there's no such thing as a number three. It is a number three. Do what now? Yeah, yeah, just, yes, yes, yes. You know, number one, then the number two, and then the number three is vomiting. So he did all that. You be, Because sometimes it's best to vomit up some stuff. Get it out of your system. Get it out of your mind. Break up. <laughs> Y'all not well this one. Break up with distractions. <laughs> yes. You know why? The question becomes, <clears throat> literally, and this is this makes sense. Make a choice. And, and here are four things. And you can bring that one up. I think it's on number four. Here's the four things real quick. If you are standing in quicksand now, and you are standing in confusion now, and you're standing in dysfunction now, what are you going to stand on in 2025? If you're standing on misinformation, you're standing on fear, you feel threatened, you feel like everything is working again. What are you going to stand on in 2025? Do you? I mean, seriously. If you are, if you are, if you are dealing, but see, if you don't even know your business, see, it's one thing to have slang. It's another thing to use a phrase, but you're not living and representing the phrase that you're saying. That's just like learning new vocabulary. Yes. Right. 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 <laughs> yes. 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 And so you heard a big word. Is you can't spell it. Number one, and you don't know where to use it. <laughs> you don't know where to use it. You know. Wow. It'll be all in the wrong place. Yes. Number one. Number one. Going into 2025 and this is this is this is one i'm gonna have to add uh so this would be number one is stand on faith she about to got a number three coming 
you you have to not, going into 2025 you're gonna have to stand on faith now watch this no one's coming to add to you but they're definitely coming to subtract this means for the believer going back to having a relationship with your phone and the Bible app is critical. She fine. Baby's alive. That that they 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 doing what babies do. It's the old folks. It's the one in here that can control the three. <laughs> Number one, you're gonna have to stand on faith. Make a choice. You're gonna have to believe you can or die early. There you go. You gotta stand on faith. And so it is the word of God. That builds your faith. Now, just like you had a conversation, like 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 we had the conversation, you don't have to read God's word in the King James Version. It is difficult to read it. I have been I have been in the pulpit and in the Bible since I was eight years old, and I'm I'm still finding that other versions of the King uh, interpretations is a whole lot more easier to read. And so, if you want to ensure your success, you're going to have to stand on faith. Can I make it plain? Number two, you have to stand on your innate inheritance. Your faith will stimulate what's inside of you that has not been discovered yet. Stand on your innate inheritance which means it gives you value. It gives you principle. You have integrity. What does that mean? You are not moved by the words that people express about you. Their words has nothing to do with your destiny. God still sits on the throne. If they can grow flowers, you can grow apples. If you are entrenched with what they said and what they doing and what you heard and they going to do this and they going to do that and it's going to be all this, then you're not ready for 2025. Nobody's bigger than God. But if you don't have any faith that he exists, then they will mow you down and put poison on you and you'll never flourish. And not only does that do that, here's the thing that really takes you over the top. If you want to add it bonus, stand for your spiritual birthright. Quit allowing people and things to try to dehumanize you. Like you have no existence, no purpose. You don't have to get mad you don't have to go off because going off on stupid don't make stupid any smarter. I'll say it again. Go, going off on stupid don't make stupid any smarter. Don't waste your time because stupid people will always play victim. Oh, my God. They say so. Oh, they so vain. Oh, my God. Oh, help, help. That will get you choked. <laughs> you go get choked. Stand on your spiritual birthright. So that's number three. So first of all, we got to stand on what? Faith. Number two? You have some. I, I heard someone talking uh, recently about they someone bakes a, a, a pretty decent something cake or pie, and now people 12 states away want it. You are gifted. The problem is you don't believe in yourself. Yes, I said, you are gifted. Yes, he said, I will bless you. You are gifted. The problem is your mind is not attached to your gift. You are gifted. But there is a disconnect between your mind and your gift because you've never had and didn't come, of, come from a family that will cultivate your gift. And when you try to do it, oh man, I'm about to have a real car, you talk, you talk, you talk, you talk, you Someone walked up to me last night. I don't know how they know, 
But they said, don't you have some books? Because my children's book, I'm going to try to have it ready by the spring. And I said, yeah, I got a book on finances. They said, you're the missing piece. That book came out, what, 2015? Almost 10 years later. How many times have you given up on yourself because of the lack of attention on what you thought was important? See, you did it for attention. You didn't do it for purpose. Y'all don't make me go there because, you know, I don't have the best mic. You know, we working our way back up, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. All right, what's number one? Stand on faith. So, so that means get back into reading. Why are you sitting there and you flossing through social media with all the crazy and funny stuff they have? Take about seven minutes and just read a scripture or something. Okay? Feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. 2025. It's starving. It's anorexic. You fat and it's skinny. Yeah, if I wasn't on camera, I'd tell you what I saw on Facebook, but that would not be becoming to a saint. The lady was cooking chitlins, and she she said, yeah, I read it. No, but she, she made a good point. She said, y'all out here talking about me cook, uh, cooking chitlins, and y'all out here eating. Oh. Nah, hey, 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 hey. Y'all fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, she said, so why y'all talking about me? That's what she said. And I, I just, you know, you put in the blank. I didn't fill it out. So y'all little church people, because you know, it's some, it's some hallelujah super saints watching this morning. I don't want them, but I'm just saying. Somebody help. Somebody help. Yeah, somebody help you fill in the blank. But it's really, it's okay. Oh, I love babies. Babies okay. Just don't leave them with me. There'll be a whole lot of number threes. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's go over this. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? All right, number four is stand on your future. Don't let people dehumanize you. Don't measure yourself by your ethnicity. Measure yourself by your content. Stand on your future. If you plan to go to school, get your rusty butt up and go to school. If you're in school, you started school, finish school. Take the test. But see, here's the whole point. You won't take no time to study. That's why you're full of number threes. It takes time. Stand on your future. Number, what's this one? Five? What do we say? You won't get walked over in your present. You had a scripture. What was that scripture? Luke 12 and 28. Luke 12 and 28. What is it talking about? Oh. It's okay because I don't know either. So this one. This is why we learn together. Because I share with people, when I teach you, if it's a fresh rhema word, I have to get in line and learn it too. So basically, Luke 12 and 28, it talks about anxiety. Um, 28 says, as in God so clothes the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? Yes. Now, this goes and ties into Numbers 9.22. And let me give you, these are little bonus points right here. And I want you to really listen. In difficult times, it's where we are proving our faith to God. God is watching all of us. He is seeing how we respond out of our natural or do we understand the spiritual attack. He rewards faithfulness. Now, this goes to Numbers 9.22 and what she was saying. When you are so full of anxiety, you are not prepared and you're lacking trust. That's the absence of preparation. I can't remember there was a legend uh, basketball player that says 
Why would you fear if you have prepared? Fear comes because of lack of preparation. If you are prepared, trust the process. Does that make sense? So Numbers says, God says, this is Numbers 9.22. God says, we shouldn't be in a hurry as long as we have his presence. It says Numbers 9.22 in the King James Version, or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abound in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. God is saying, as long as my presence. The problem is, because of distractions, because of anxieties, I think this would probably be a good place to put a pin in it. We fret. We're talking to people and have not talked to God and have not had any kind of devotion or communion with God. Because what we're looking for is an immediate answer. This is why I said we have to make a choice. And sometimes it's a part of your development. God is stretching you. He's stretching me. So here's the test. But because I'm not prepared in my faith and I'm not prepared in his word, fear and fright and anxiety is all I have to hang on to. I can't repeat his word. I don't trust his word because I have spent no time with his word. And literally what we're saying is God created us, but man rules us. God created us, but people rule us. Because we fear people more than we fear not pleasing God. And sometime in our lives, God is going to have us stand still and watch his presence. And he says this, as long as you have my presence... Remember, he's the timekeeper. Remember, he's the author and finisher of our faith. Remember, he is the self existing God. We put more trust in, they say it. And not who he's about. And as I close, he said this. Before one jot, a tilt of my word fell. See, here's the thing. People want you to focus on what they said. And we many times cannot remember one promise from God. And if I'm not mistaken, there's over three to 5,000 promises from God. So in the next opportunity of anxiety and frustration, I recommend you Google how many promises did God give in the Bible? And let that become your reading bench. Read three to four promises a day. God said before one jot or tilt of my word fell, if you feel like God has made and have a contract and a covenant with you, eight thousand eight thousand eight hundred and ten promises in the Bible, and you somewhere worried about Big Lip Leroy. How many? 7,487. 7, and, and, and we probably hadn't read three of them. Are still not satisfied. If you read, see, this is when faith has to get kicked. Faith has to kick in. This takes you out of flesh. It takes you out of nature. It takes you out of your human realm. And you actually dab into the spiritual side. Because remember, 
Your body will stay here on earth, but your spirit has to go somewhere. So I'm going to believe in God and I'm going to tell my flesh, you might need to go somewhere and sit down. Okay. Sit down, sit down. That's where we need to be. Now let's read those two numbers again if y'all have them and we're closing. 8,810 promises, 8, 810 promises in, the Bible. in the Bible, 7,000, 7,400, 7, and 87 are promises to human humankind. Get back in his word. Make a choice. Become, for, become more familiar with the creative life. God bless you. We'll see you soon.